Hey everyone, Joel Hansen here and welcome to a full day of eating with a competitive eater, aka myself. So I've done a video similar to this before. Um, yeah, so let's do it again and then I'll also give you some gym footage which is highly requested at the end of the video. So yeah, um, currently it's like a lot later in the day than normally I start eating but I've just been busy this morning. Went to the gym, all that stuff. So I haven't eaten yet, it's about 3 p.m. Um, not that I recommend not eating until 3 p.m., it's just the way it goes. But my diet is basically, uh, it's not the same foods every day, but it's about the same macronutrient composition. So essentially it's like the same stuff pretty much every day. Uh, well, it equates to the same thing every day. So uh, I'm going to start eating, I'm hungry, and let's have some fun. Alright, so here I have, I mean it's like the leg fell off, whatever, but this is like a quarter chicken. So it's like a back, like a thigh with back attached, some people also call them. So yeah, I'm going to shove this in the microwave. I um, also have two pieces of toast in the toaster. I'll put some light, I can't believe it's not butter on it. And uh, yeah, I'll show you what we get going. Then my chicken's heated up. So I'm just gonna eat right out of the container because I'll have to wash it anyway. Some barbecue sauce, some hot sauce. Then I'm just gonna eat this. I personally don't eat the skins. I always take them off. You should try to take them off before I cook them, but if I don't, I'll try to take them off after. At least as much as I can. I also got two more pieces of toast. I didn't butter this one. Then I always have about 100 grams of carbohydrates from fruits, so generally it's like at least four servings. Um, usually I'll just eat like four apples or something like that, but today I'm getting a little fancy. Um, first time I've actually taken this blender out and used it since a long time ago, probably almost a year. But I'm gonna make like a, like a smoothie, like a, I call it like ice cream. Um, usually it's better if I have bananas, I don't have bananas, but yeah. So I'm feeling fancy today, so let's do it. But it's always like, about 100 grams of carbs from fruits every day. So here I have about a pound of mixed berries, which is roughly about 60 carbs. So that's pretty cool. Berries are a lot like lower in carbohydrates than a lot of fruits, a lot higher in fiber. Um, so generally, optimally, if I had a couple, or like a frozen banana, I put a frozen banana in there, I don't have one. And usually I'd prefer to have like almond milk or soy milk um, to put in there. I mean, you could use regular milk, I don't have either. But uh, always an obligatory, uh, this is a scoop of protein. So this one is called a, um, what's it called? A snickerdoodle flavor. I like vanilla usually, but I don't have it. Um, I'm not using this like as a protein shake per se. You really put the like whey protein or the protein powder in it more to act as like a creamer. Um, Cause I make it a very thick consistency, kind of like ice cream. Um, and it's even better if you have the emulsifiers in the soy milk or almond milk. Um, and then the banana. The banana adds a lot of texture, but... YOLO! So the key for the thickness for it to resemble ice cream is to use as little liquid as possible and, you know, get to your desired thickness without... Well, I always usually overheat the blender, but I might add it already a bit too much liquid. You gotta have a good blender for this. This is a Ninja. It works really well. Vitamixes are also good too. 
So I'll kind of show you. So you're gonna see that it's like, it's so thick it's barely moving. And like, like, I can hold it sideways, as you hear it. Like you tip it upside down, like it's not moving. Um, there's a little bit, so like you can see there's a color, maybe a little bit, a little bit darker color here. So like I also kind of mix it up a little bit, bring some of the stuff on the bottom to the top. Just make sure it's really well uh, distributed. Because the stuff in the bottom is being mixed a bit more than the stuff on the top. Again, considering that this is all so thick that it's not properly being mixed. Ooh, that's good. Like it normally would. And if it's not sweet enough, sometimes I've had Splenda in the past, but this is way sweet enough. So here, I'll show you. It's not really moving that much. Like that's how thick it is. It's like soft serve ice cream. All right, so perfect consistency. Like again, it's literally like ice cream. It's like it stays formed on a spoon. Probably like, I guess like, I think it's even like it's thicker than yogurt. Very, very thick yogurt kind of. Mm. It's aerated from all the blending, the whipping. It is creamy. It's really good. There was a time in my life where I literally had this every single day. It was delicious. And I now am remembering why. I haven't made this in probably maybe three years, three or four years. This takes a while. Gotta have the ingredients. So good. And I'm very like, I'm all about convenience. Like, I don't really care about tastes and stuff all too much. Like, well, I'm gonna enjoy something, I'm gonna enjoy something, but my day to day, I just, I like, I'm so simple. Like, I'm cooking chicken legs. And like, literally all I do is just have them in the oven. I don't care, like I can add sauces and stuff afterwards, just throw them in there. And uh, yeah, so usually just like grab apples or whatever it is. So, I'm gonna eat this, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it's delicious. So I literally just walked from my kitchen to my little corner here, my table, called my workspace. Um, probably took me about a whole 10 seconds. Time is 3.36, <coughs> excuse me, getting over a cold. Um, so yeah, like I, I tell people before, like I don't really do like meals. There's no meals per day. I just eat what I want to eat and I fulfill my macronutrient desires and that's it. So whether I was eating for one hour in a day or whether I'm eating for 12 hours a day, it all amounts to the same thing. Um, so here my computer. I do a lot, of, this is where I do all my editing. Computer. And this is where I spend probably about minimum 20, maybe 30 hours a week. Um, so basically I have a, call it like nine to five-ish schedule. Um, usually I try to go to the gym in the morning. This week I've been really bad, so I'm going afterwards. And usually I finish my evenings right here. Unless I'm doing something or traveling, but when I'm here, I'm working. All right, I'm sorry, but like, this is just so good. I gotta like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta brag. Like, just like. Mm. Oh, 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 it's so good. Oh, 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 oh. Well, that was great. Best thing. I still have some left. All right, so the time is 4.40. Um, I had a couple swigs of vegetable cocktail, so basically like V8, and now I'm just eating the rest of my carrots, which unfortunately is like one and a quarter. And then I'm gonna have my apple, which would be my fruit for the day. It's a Granny Smith apple. Love Granny Smith apples. I like the acidity, the sourness. So yeah, still editing. All right, the time is, <clears throat> if my phone will work, 5.11. I have about that many green beans. I don't know, it might be like a half a pound. Um, I just have some potassium chloride on it, like a salt substitute and some salt. Sodium chloride. Potassium chloride, sodium chloride. That's it, I'm just gonna eat my beans. All right, I just had a multivitamin and a calcium supplement. I forgot to show you me taking those. 
Um, and then I made oatmeal. So this is one and one third cup uncooked. And however much it actually blows and expands to. And I put in this salt, Splenda, and about a tablespoon, or not a tablespoon, about a teaspoon, or a little less of uh, my light, I can't believe it's not butter. Very delicious. So it's about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's about eight o'clock. I'm about just finished editing that video, so I don't know how long that took, probably like four and a half, five hours. Um, what else? I haven't eaten anything else yet. I'm gonna eat a little bit more. So somewhere about our like macros for the day, we're probably about 60, 70 grams of protein, maybe about 70, um, 240, let's say 250, about probably 250 carbs, and then fat, um, relatively low, I'd say maybe like 40, maybe about 40-ish grams, something like that. So I'm gonna eat a little bit more, and uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, and last thing, so I have a can of beans here. I just drain them, there's white kidney beans, and then I'll have like, I mean, this is like a little piece that fell off, and I'll probably have like one chicken leg. That's about it, it'll give us like, I don't know, about 100-ish grams of protein. Um, yeah, 100, just over 100 grams protein. Uh, somewhere about 300 carbs. We'll put some sauce on this. I'll show you what they look like in a moment. And, uh, yep. And my bad. I basically started eating in the kitchen, but I stopped. Um, so I, I actually, instead of just like one chicken leg, I went for two. So I had one other one, which I just ate one chicken leg. So I still have the one right here. I just ate one in the kitchen. I kind of forgot I was recording. And then I have all the beans, which I put a little bit of barbecue sauce, some salsa, and a little bit of hot sauce on. And that's it. That's uh, that's all I'm gonna eat today. I mean, my foods change day to day, but macronutrient composition is pretty much about the same. Um, I normally have a little bit more vegetables. Like normally, like I only have like basically one carrot left today, or like one carrot left. Normally, probably about five. But besides that. I mean, pretty normal. This is a Saturday, so. I mean, I was around home since 3 o'clock. So, I mean, obviously, the timing and everything's different if it's a weekday. But, yeah, that's about it. So, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for joining me on my day of eating. Hope it gives you an insight. A lot of people want to see this. And now, enjoy some gym footage. And all right, everybody. So welcome to a day at the gym with Joel. Um, so first off, I'll start by saying I don't recommend anybody ever do what I do. Um, this is not a good gym program by any means. I have a number of significant injuries that I try to work through and work with and at this point I'm really just trying to preserve my muscle mass to the best of my abilities. Um, so yeah, but we'll dive into it. So uh, first I did some foam rolling as you just saw. I did uh, some mobility and kind of uh, massage and stuff with my lacrosse ball against the wall. Definitely recommend everybody spending a lot of time doing stretching and stuff as much as possible. I, I even need to spend a lot more. I'm you know quite tight. Uh, I spend a lot of time sitting at a desk and stuff. Um, so I did some incline benching. Um, so I partially tore my right pec tendon uh, probably about like seven years ago now, six, seven years ago doing flat benching. So I can not flat bench. I haven't been able to in again about six or seven years. So I do an incline. Um, this incline, if this makes sense, like this seat doesn't move at all. So normally I'd like it like maybe a little bit less of a 
but I did not as high. Um, so I kind of lift my butt a little bit and kind of arch my back a little bit more just to kind of uh, make up for that. Um, so it kind of gets to the angle, which works for me, um, which because it really is an ongoing thing with my pec. So like I will have sometimes a couple good couple weeks um, where I'll like start pushing the weights and getting stronger and my pec tendon doesn't bother me and then I'll come back to like irritating it and having to take a week off and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but essentially I was at, uh, started at 185, well, I mean, I warmed up, then I did some sets of 185, I think they're about sets of maybe like eight, five or eight, I think about eight. And then I went to 195, um, I think it was 195. That is, um, 205 right there, maybe, 200, 205, something like that. Um, and this I think I just did for one, but I did like sets of eight, I think it's 185, I did a couple, a set or two with 195. Um, and then I just did this just for fun, just to kind of feel it out. I was feeling pretty good this day, so you know I kind of take advantage of where I am. As far as training goes um, and what I built my base on, I'm a big fan of 5x5s um, five and heavy training. Um, so if you have the ability, definitely recommend doing 5x5s five heavy. I'm not into fluff and puff. If you have the ability, I don't have the ability. Then I uh, went to this little uh, fly machine. Again, with my pec, I kind of turn it more into a pec deck. Um, bring it like I bring myself forward a little bit, uh, limit the range of motion, and uh, do a few sets. I mean, for like this, I mean, I just did the whole stack. It's not heavy. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, just kind of really focus on your uh, my frontal contractions without kind of elongating that tendon, putting it at a um, compromised position. That is usually where it hurts and irritates it. So essentially, we'll call this like a few sets on the pec deck. Usually, do about three to five sets. Um, you know, anywhere from let's say like 10 to 15 reps um, a set. Um, next injury we'll talk about, I have a partial tear to my left patellar tendon. Um, it was really significant. At first when it happened, I couldn't even walk. This was about four, three, four years ago. So I haven't been able to train legs in three or four years, um, being like actually squat or deadlift. At one point I was actually strong and uh, leg day was my favorite. Um, unfortunately that has changed um, so uh, I mean this is sped up so it looks kind of funny but I just do essentially some work um, again it's not like a full range of motion um, on the little leg press machine here um, then I went to some tricep extensions I have um, a series of ongoing right tricep tendonitis kind of like tennis elbow uh, um, but again, just did some rope pull downs. It works really well. I used to do a lot of kind of overhead uh, tricep work, but I can't do it anymore with my tendonitis. Um, so essentially just kind of like my push downs. Then um, I have some, uh, we did some just machine um, shoulder press here. Usually I would use dumbbells um, or a barbell. However, with my abdominal injury that I've been dealing with, this was just a lot easier on it. And in all reality, I'm just very thankful to be able to train shoulders again. I have a severe kind of bicep, uh, proximal bicep tendonitis, which I've been dealing with for now about a year, year and a bit. Um, and it's only really recently I've been able to train shoulders again after about a year. So just super thankful I can do that. And uh, with that, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll just flex with the wall getting in my way.